so for today we will discuss about the uh, about the uh, current sensitivity and charge sensitivity sensitivity of a of a galvanometer basically ballistic galvanometer so let us discuss about the theory of this uh, of this experiment so uh, current sensitivity that is basically we tell figure of merit figure of merit and charge sensitivity of a ballistic galvanometer right so galvanometer is an instrument used for the detection of charge current and also voltage and i have already discussed about the conversion of galvanometer into a voltmeter and also a an ammeter right so at the beginning of this course i have i have discussed uh, using the using the resistance in series and resistance in parallel with this galvanometer we can convert it to the uh, voltmeter and ammeter right so now galvanometer basically depending upon the use of it it can be divided into two types ballistic galvanometer and dead bit galvanometer so ballistic galvanometer is used for measuring the measuring the charge and dead bit galvanometer is used for measuring the current and voltage okay so again depending on the construction of galvanometer it is classified into two two types this moving coil galvanometer and moving magnet galvanometer in galvanometer you know there are the two parts one is one is permanent magnet and another is uh, coil moving uh, another is coil now this uh, either coil will move and this permanent magnet will be fixed or it can be it can happen that this coil is fixed but this permanent magnet will move okay so these are two two types depending on whether coil is moving or the or the permanent magnet is moving now again for each case again this there are two types one is is pivoted type and another is suspension type pivoted type earlier whatever the galvanometer i discussed which was uh, used to convert the voltmeter and ammeter so during that time uh, whatever the galvanometer i have showed you that's the basically pivoted type okay this coil so now this coil again is connected with the it's a, it's a rotate it whether it will move whether it will move uh, with respect to an axis so it's a, it's it's basically uh, that pivoted type okay so there is a there is a axis and uh, that axis passes through the uh, through the through the through the center of the of the coil and this axis on the plane of the coil okay so uh, so that's how we are telling this pivoted type and if this coil is 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 suspended from a rope is suspended from a rope then we tell this suspension type so today we i will show you this uh, this type suspension type of galvanometer okay and it is moving coil type of galvanometer okay so but it can be other type also this also we tell this tangent galvanometer uh, this pivoted type this uh, uh, yeah we uh, we also tell this tangent type galvanometer so uh, for suspension type of 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 galvanometer and specially ballistic galvanometer uh, today we will discuss about it so so uh, so we will discuss about the moving coil suspension type galvanometer moving coil suspension type galvanometer so this is a coil this is a coil okay rectangular coil now 
this coil is suspended, is hanged using a fiber rope, using a fiber rope and in between here this just we attached one mirror. So, why we have attached mirror that I will tell you. So, now this, this is, this is, this coil is hanged using this fiber rope is suspended ok. And this other end of this, this uh, other, other side of this coil is, is, is connected with a spring. So, one side is, 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 is coil, uh, one side of the coil is the, is the rope, fiber rope and other side of the coil is the, is the spring. So, uh, this rope has basically restoring, it, it will apply restoring force this uh, torsional, uh, it is the, it is called torsional torque, torsional due to torsional torque. Uh, so, that will act as a restoring force, restoring torque, uh, because of that there will be balance between the, uh, between the restoring torque and the, and the applied torque. So, what is applied torque that I will, I will tell you. Uh, so, so, now this coil is placed in a permanent magnet, this magnet is fixed. So, this is the electromagnet, this is the electromagnet, not electromagnet, this is a permanent magnet, but its shape, its pole shape is concave type, its pole shape is concave type. There is a reason for this, for taking this concave type uh, pole. If you take flat pole, then this uh, magnetic field will be this. Now, when coil will move, so basically, uh, basically, component of this magnetic field will participate in the torque. So, torque will basically vary when this coil will move, will rotate. So, to avoid that one, to keep the torque constant, to keep the torque constant, so we take this concave type of, of, of pole which will produce radial field. So, radial field means this uh, this field is passing through this center ok. So, even this coil moves, so all the time that field will remain remain constant, uh, field will remain constant uh, means uh, this uh, uh, field, field on the plane of the coil, field on the plane in the direction uh, on the in the direction of the uh, not plane direction, uh, I should tell this field along the uh, along the uh, coil surface. This will remain constant. Will remain constant. So we'll get basically the constant uh, torque. So that is the reason uh, we we take this concave type of pole pieces uh, to produce radial field which help us to keep the torque constant, torque acting on this, on this coil will be constant ok. So, so when coil will move, coil will move so that, that there is a deflection, that is basically deflection of the coil. So, there will be change of angle of this coil ok. Uh, due to this torque and due to the uh, due to this rotation. So, that rotation that angle we have to measure. So, for that basically uh, light scale arrangement is used. So, one mirror is 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 attached uh, on the roof and if light falls on this on this mirror then this will be the reflected one. This is the incident light and this is the reflected light from the mirror. Now, uh, when light, when uh, this coil will rotate, so this mirror also rotate with same angle. So, if this rotation is, is this angle is theta, so this reflected one will move, will move this spot on the scale, this will move ok. So, because of change of this angle is 2 theta. So, that you know this if mirror rotates by theta, this reflected light rotate by 2 theta. 
So now distance between mirror and scale is say capital D is capital D and the spot displacement is, is say small d. So then tan 2 theta, tan 2 theta will be the small d divided by this capital D. So since angle is small, so tan theta we can write 2 theta, tan 2 theta we can write 2 theta. So 2 theta will be equal to small d by capital D. So theta will be equal to small d by cap 2 capital D, 2 into capital D. Okay. So from here we will get the small d and this capital D generally is uh, around 1 meter. Uh, so that also we have to measure. So basically from, from this light scale arrangement with mirror, uh, so this will give you the angle theta, okay? rotation of this coil by this angle theta or deflection of this coil that we will get from this from this this arrangement okay so now uh, so when current will flow through this coil through this coil okay so then what will happen uh, this coil will rotate why coil will rotate when coil will rotate so this coil will rotate with respect to this axis so with respect to this uh, with respect to this this uh, suspension uh, of this coil so this will be taken as a axis so this rope this fiber rope that will be taken as a axis of rotation and with respect to this so this will rotate okay so by angle some theta so that means some torque will work on this on this coil when current will flow through this or charge will flow through this okay so uh, so what is the relation of this of this current flow through this and the and the and the and the rotation that we should find out so you know the lorentz force okay so this lorentz force f equal to q charge v cross v v is the velocity of the charge and charge is in a in a magnetic field b so uh, so this i can write this charge find this q this v i can write this uh, length by time so that is the v velocity length by time into b and this cross product is sin theta okay so now this capital B is basically this magnetic field, this magnetic field from the permanent magnet and this charge moving in this charge moving in this coil because of this current, because of this current I. So from here I can write Q by T into L. So Q by T is basically current I. So this force I can write force equal to I L cross B. So in our case, in our case, this charge is flowing through this coil. So length of the coil is L, length of the coil is L and cross B. Now you look at it. So there are four direction, there are four direction of the L. One is this direction, another is this, other one is this and other one is this, okay. So four arms, so four length, four direction. Okay. Now this I, so current flowing, this I L direction is I L basically. So direction of the of the length, uh, in which direction this current is flowing. So current is coming this way and then moving this way. Okay. So let's say this one. So this the for this arm, current is moving down. And this current, this I, uh, L, this L, this direction is perpendicular, is perpendicular to the magnetic field direction is this, okay. So B is in this direction and this current is in this direction. So L cross B, so that will be the force, this force direction will be this, force direction will be this, you see, force direction will be this, okay. Now when we will consider this arm. So, this 
so this is the L direction, current direction, this is the L direction or current direction cross B, B is also in this direction. So, L and B are in same direction. So, this theta is 0. So, this, this force is 0. So, there will not be any force on this arm as well as on this arm which is parallel to the magnetic field. So, only force will act on this arm, this vertical arm and this other one, but direction of the current is in opposite direction. So, this force will be in opposite direction. So, the same force are acting on this two arm that distance is B, right. So, then there will be couple and this corresponding torque, corresponding torque will be B cross F, B cross F, okay. And this we have taken as L, this length we have taken as L, okay. So, now F is L cross B into I into I is there and now I have multiplied with N, multiplied with N. So, if number of turns in the coil is N, number of turns in the coil is, is N, okay. So, that will be the torque, that will be the torque. Now, this since this B we have taken radial field, okay. So, all the time, so all the time, so this, uh, this uh, sin theta, this theta will be all the time 90 degree, theta will be 90 degree because as I told this, this is the L direction and this is the B direction. When it will move, when it will move, so this uh, direction, in that direction this this field will be available, same field will be available. So, that is why L and B will be all the time perpendicular, theta will be remain 90 degree and then basically we are getting L B that sin theta sin 90 degree that will be 1, okay. So, from here you are getting basically B L capital B I N B L, B L, B L. So, that is nothing but the area of the coil. So, that I have written A, that A is area of the coil, B is the magnetic field, permanent magnetic field, I is the current flowing in to this coil I and N is number of turns. So, torque acting on this, on this coil will depend on the area of the coil then magnetic field, permanent magnetic field B, radial field B and this current I and the number of turns. So, for a particular uh, galvanometer, so N is fixed, B is also fixed and area of the coil also fixed. So, here torque is basically you can vary, just varying the current I, right. So, and then what will be the direction of the torque, what will be, because these are all cross product. So, direction of the torque, direction of the torque will, you can find out. So, direction of the force is this, direction of the force is this, this perpendicular to the, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the plane of this paper, okay. Uh, so, from here direction of the force is this. Now, cross B, B is, B is this direction. So, B is this direction and, and force direction is this. So, then, then torque direction will be third direction, then torque direction will be third direction, right. Torque direction will be third direction. So, which one is third direction? Third direction is this one, right. Third direction is this one because force is this direction, B is this direction. So, third direction is this. So, this is the direction of the coil uh, rotation, this torque. So, that means that will be the axis of rotation, that will be the axis of rotation. So, this nothing but this direction is, is along the direction of the, of the fiber rope or direction of the suspension, okay. So, that is why this coil rotate about this axis of suspension, okay, which is passing through the to the center of the coil as well as it is on the plane of this coil, okay. This axis is on the plane of the coil, not perpendicular uh, of the coil passing through the center. It is passing through the center, but it is on the plane of the coil, okay. So, this, this is the uh, uh, 
rotation of the coil will be basically with respect to the axis axis of this or with respect to the suspension of the uh, of the coil okay so this is uh, fine so due to this torque there will be rotation of coils now when it will rotate so there will be balance between this torque and the restoring torque so this restoring torque or couple of the suspension wire so that is basically one can write c theta where c is the torque per restoring torque per unit twist of the wire okay so then for theta theta to angle so this this for unit angle so for theta angle so torque restoring torque will be c theta so now when these two will balance this torque this torque okay due to this current will be equal to this restoring torque so then i will get this steady deflection okay so that's why that's why the our final relation has come uh, between current and angle so n i a b equal to c theta so so now what is the definition of figure of merit or current sensitivity that is d i by d theta this is d i by d theta so means for so what what amount of current is required for unit rotation for unit rotation how much current is required so if if small current is required so this will be this will be smaller so smaller value of figure of merit is better means current sensitive will be it's a it's it's very current sensitive then it will be very current sensitive so we need very small current to uh, to rotate by unit uh, unit angle okay so now if it is a definition of the figure of merit or current sensitivity and relation we have for for this uh, suspension coil in a permanent magnet the relation we got ni ab equal to c theta so that means i equal to c by ni b theta so basically i is proportional to theta so then i can write i equal to n theta theta eta is the proportionality constant and if i compare this to if i compare this to then eta equal to i can write i by theta so this equivalent to di by d theta so i by theta equal to c n ab okay so this eta is nothing but this called the current sensitivity or figure of merit so current sensitivity or figure of merit is equal to the c by n ab so it completely depends on this on this galvanometer it depends on the torsional uh, torque c of the suspension uh, rope and it depends on the coil and permanent magnet amount of permanent magnet so this is the definition according to definition and from our uh, relation we could find out this current sensitivity eta equal to c by n ab right so then next definition of charge sensitivity sensitive so this is dq by d theta means similar di by d theta this is dq by d theta right so uh, so they given this uh, how much charge is required for unit deflection so that's the charge sensitivity if small charge is required so it's better its sensitivity better although this magnitude wise is uh, so when magnitude will be lower and lower so the sensitivity will be better and better right so so to find out the relation of 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 this charge sensitivity so what i have to do so we have to go few steps so now you see this force force is linear force okay what is the relation between the force and the momentum so change of dp by dt dp by dt so that is the that is the force linear force okay 
Similarly, the stork, it's a is the reason for the uh, rotation. Force F is the reason for the translational motion. So this torque is, is basically the change of angular momentum with time. So dl by dt, l is angular momentum. Change of angular momentum with time, that is the torque. Change of linear momentum with time, that is the force. Okay. So one is responsible for the linear motion, another is responsible for the rotational motion. So now this torque tau is NIBA that we have seen NIBA. Okay. Now from here this we can so DL equal to NIBA into DT, I is there, so I DT. So if you integrate, so you will get uh, integration over this i uh, into dt. So, that will give you charge q. So, this part is this and this this one is basically L. Now, L for linear momentum, linear momentum that is P equal to m a, m is the mass and a is the acceleration, right. Similarly, for angular momentum L, so that is the m is replaced by the moment of inertia i and V is replaced by the angular velocity omega. So, I omega linear momentum equal to I omega, right. So, here I got one relation I omega equal to this I omega equal to N A B Q fine. Now, when this coil will rotate and then uh, due to restoring force it will come at a at a uh, at a particular uh, position, uh, at a particular deflection, angle of deflection. So, due to restoring force, so it will remain there, it will stop there. Okay. So, basically, uh, basically what happens in that position, so this, it will have only potential energy due to the restoring force, restoring torque. Okay. And initially at the starting point there is no restoring force. So that time this coil start to move with maximum velocity. Okay. Then its velocity will, angular velocity will decrease and come to at a, at a, uh, at a, at a uh, uh, stop position uh, where that restoring force will be maximum because it is a twisted now. And then basically uh, then we can tell this it is uh, now at stop position. So, this, this system will have the completely potential energy. At the beginning the system will have the completely, uh, it, will, it will have the completely kinetic energy. So, basically due to this deflection kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. Right? So, these two energy will be same kinetic energy will be equal to the potential energy. So, kinetic energy half mv square. So, half m is replaced by i, v is replaced by omega, half i omega square. And uh, you know this, uh, you are familiar with this uh, spring mass system, right? If spring constant is k, so its potential energy become half k x square. So, similarly here half c theta square, okay? So, this will be the uh, potential energy and this will be the kinetic energy and they are same and from here you can get this I square omega square equal to I multiplied with I basically I multiplied with I in both side. So, equal to I C theta square. Okay. Now, uh, if you equate this to I omega equal to this and I square omega square equal to this. So, you can eliminate this I omega and equating these two, equating these two, square of this, I think, uh, okay, uh, square root of this, this will be equal to the square root of this. So, Q will be equal to 1 by NAV and square root of this. So, square root of C i into, it was theta square, so it is theta outside of the square root, that is theta. So, this I can just rearrange, okay. So, I just take 
multiplied with square root of c and divided by with square root of c. So, basically then I will get uh, this square root of c into square root of c. So, it will be c and inside this square root I will get i by c, i by c. Now, square root of i by c what it is? I can tell you this, you know this is the, this is the simple harmonic motion, simple harmonic motion. Okay, so, equation I can write i theta double dot plus c theta equal to 0, right. So, theta double dot equal to c by i uh, theta. So, this is written as a omega square. So, this omega is square root of c by i and omega is 2 pi by t. So, then square root of c by i uh, here what we are getting i by c just reverse. So, it will be say the 1 by omega, 1 by omega, 1 by omega. So, that is t by 2 pi. So, here this t by 2 pi has come. Okay. So, q equal to we are getting this term. right? So, this now q equal to I can write k theta. Earlier I, I was writing eta theta, eta theta i equal to eta theta. So, similarly q equal to k theta. Okay. So, q is basically is proportional to theta. So, this k is proportional to constant and then this k will be equal to k will be equal to basically uh, q by theta, q by theta equal to this c by n a b t by 2 pi. Okay. So, this is nothing but called it is called the charge signal q by theta means d q is uh, equivalent to d q by d theta. So, that is what we have defined as a charge um, sensitivity. So, this k is charge sensitivity and its relation is this. Now, c by n a b, c by n a b is nothing but eta, is nothing but eta. So, this k is equal to basically eta t by 2 pi. Okay. So, that means, so that means if I know, if I know the charge current sensitivity eta, then only I have to find out the time period of this, of this uh, oscillation, time period of the oscillation of this, of this, uh, of this coil. Okay. So, if I find out this uh, time period of this oscillation of the coil uh, and if I know the current sensitivity eta then I will know the charge uh, sensitivity. Okay. So, if I, if I calculate the current sensitivity, then only I have to, I have to additionally, I have to find out the uh, time period of the oscillation of the coils, then we will know the charge sensitivity uh, along with the current sensitivity. Right. So, so, this is the basically theory. So, now here you see eta. So, this working formula for charge sensitivity and current sensitivity is basically this k equal to equal to eta into t by 2 pi and for current sensitivity is eta equal to this. Now, uh, now you see this, this all are not known to us you know. I this all are either one has to supply all this or you have to measure all this, but this we cannot, we cannot because this is a closed system either it has to be given to you or you have to find out another way how to, how to measure this eta. Okay. So, so in this, in this experiment basically we have to, we have to, we have to design the experiment in such a way that we can measure the current sensitivity. We can measure the current sensitivity. Okay. So, here, uh, so how to design that experiment uh, for measuring the current sensitivity and after that, after that just measuring the time period. Uh, we can we can we can get the charge sensitivity. So for that we have to design the experiment, and that's what I will discuss in next class when we will do the experiment. Okay. So I'll stop here, and in next class we'll we'll start our uh, experiment. Thank you.